What's up, Jill? Well, we are back in the kitchen with Chef Paul Aponte from the Villa Ta Village Tavern, and you're going to make the crepes now on one I big, am make the gigantic yeah. griddle. This is actually from our home, so I cheated. And you, <laughs> you can make it in a saute pan, and um, but uh, you know this is more visual, and I'm all about visual. Well, you're a so. TV guy, and so oh. you get that it's easier to see. <laughs> you're too kind. You're so let me ask you first before we mm -hmm. start pouring this. I yes. have um, actually, I think for a wedding gift, I got a crepe like cookie cutter type of thing that had a little mm -hmm. handle, and you were supposed to put it down, and then it would go in the middle. It would only stay. It would shape it, and it would Do, stay. Is that stay necessary? Away. Um, no. Well, you know, if you want it absolutely perfectly round, unless you want to practice, then I'd say that's the best bet to go. Okay. But you know, for um, for those who just you know want to look. Relatively round mm -hmm. and want to do it themselves and and want to practice and this is the best way to do it. Okay. Okay. I've never so. used it. If if anybody wants it, you can have it. <laughs> no, sell it on eBay. Okay. Come on, that's I'll what everybody's sell doing it on for Craigslist. Cheap on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the uh, mix itself is pretty simple. It's uh, about a cup of flour, two eggs, okay, a cup and a half of milk, um, a quarter cup of sugar, all right, a little bit of salt, and just a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And you'll be able to taste that little bit of taste of nutmeg. Do you like that and fresh or? I um, yeah, I do. Okay. You know, so, but. Um, it's very simple to put together, and you'll look at the nice, warm consistency. Let's show the consistency of this camera look right at that. here. So look can at see. that. Very, very much on the liquid side. Okay. Now, what you want to do is um, you're going to heat your pan. Really hot. Yes, really hot. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a ladle, and the way that I, the way I do it, it's like, I'll just go ahead and pour it. So that's about four ounces right there. Yeah. And you know what? And you're going to use your ladle to shape the crepe. And really, that's about it as far as making the crepe. You're going to let that cook, probably depending on how hot your pan is. And depending now, if you want a thicker crepe, more like a pancake, you're going to put less milk. Okay. If you want a really thin one, like um, like this one and the ones that we're going to make for today, you're going to you're going to stick with that cup and a half of milk. Okay. And you know, in the thin one, you have to be careful though, because it will obviously it'll cook around the edges first. So don't make the pan too hot because it's kind of like um, let's say when you make grilled cheese. And it gets, it gets crispy all... on the outside. And what's wrong with the cheese? It's cold. Well, it's cold. Yeah. And the problem that I have with pancakes, and I've only tried to make crepes once, and mm -hmm. it was a dismal disaster, is that I put Pam spray on mm -hmm. it, and then it gets like black. And so they're not clean yeah. and pretty like that. They look like they're okay. burned. What well, is if that? that's the case, you know what? Your pan is probably too hot before, okay. you, before you did that. Lower the temperature a little bit. But you know, and then you know, and then try it because if your pan's too hot, it automatically starts to to burn so right off the bat. It, so it didn't have anything to do with the pan spray stuff. Um, no, or? but it would happen the same with butter too. So gotcha. I would lower the temperature of your pan. But you notice, like you know, you can sit there and play with it, and that's what I do all the time. I sit there. You're not. You know, a lot of people just wait, and then they'll flip it over. I like to poke at it, and everyone at home will do that. <laughs> <He's> ADD. <laughs> That's right, and I'd like to get a little bit here, and then a little bit on this side, <laughs> and you know, things of that nature. But you know, in just a moment, the middle, which is the longest part, and see, I have to be careful because if this breaks apart, you know, it, it's going to be a national emergency for us. <laughs> well, so. they revoke your, you know, my crepe license. Your crepe license. They do yes. with that. So, spinning around. Very good. And. Now we're going to let that cook on one side. Now while that is actually cooking, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the sauce itself. Okay. We remember we saved our peels from our pears, and I'm going to need your help with that brown sugar. And you're going to heat a pan? Yes. Go ahead and put all of it. Go ahead and throw all of it in there. Okay. Add some roughly about um, roughly about um, half a cup of brown sugar, and you're going to keep on stirring that until all the um, all the butter. Or all the sugar actually I guess starts it's not to going anywhere. Yeah, I felt so. like it was a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, so once the, once the sugar starts to melt down, then we're going to start adding some other things. But, you know, for all of you out there, you can't smell this, but you can definitely smell the sugar, the sweetness of it. It starts to get that thick glaze, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, I'm going to run over here to your left, okay. and I'm going to help you. After that sugar starts to break down as such, about three-quarters of a cup of pear nectar. Doesn't necessarily have to be pear nectar, though this one in particular is um, Kern's, Kern, um, Kern's um, pear nectar. We're gonna throw that in there, let that um, come up a little bit, intermix with the, um, the sugar and the pears, then about half oh, a cup no, of Riesling wine. I do I wanna say, you wanna stick with Riesling, it is a very sweet wine, and that's what we're shooting for since this is a dessert. Okay. So we're gonna bring that up, and we're gonna stir that, and we're gonna put in just about a tablespoon of cornstarch. Okey -dokey. The cornstarch is going to help thicken the, the sauce itself. So Ooh, when you're making the sauce, sorry. that's all right. <laughs> now when you're making the sauce, what you're going to do is you're going to let that you're going to bring it up to a boil, 
and then you're going to turn it down, let it simmer for about two or three minutes. Okay, and we'll um, let that boil. Yeah, and I, I would say in probably just a little bit, you're going to see that um, that it's actually going to be very thick. Now, I do want to point out these are a couple of crepes that I made earlier, and what you can do is once you're done with them, get some kind of plastic, um, you know, like um, like parchment, like parchment paper mm -hmm. to separate them. You can roll them up, put them in the freezer. You are good. Okay, so, so we're letting this boil, solid. and then what? Let that boil and stir it for a little bit longer, okay. and then you're going to lower the heat. Oh, I can already start. We should start to see it. Um, yep. Oh yeah. So um, heat, and you're going to lower the heat. Thicker. You're going to let that simmer for a couple minutes, and then the sauce is pretty much done, except for just getting rid of the peels. But again, the great thing about the crepes, put them in the freezer. You don't have to worry about them. You can make these a week ahead if you like. All right. The crepes um, work very well, and that's a nice golden color that you're using. Well, I think I'm going to let for. this continue to thicken up a little bit. Awesome. And let all those yummy flavors kind of infuse. Um, but you're going to need to stick around for the final segment where we show you kind of how you can put them, stuff the crepes, and add the sauce. And uh, then we're also going to tell you a little bit about what the Village Tavern has going on over this weekend and on their menu right now. Awesome. Right, Andy? That's right. I think Paul would be a great house guest, don't you think? <laughs> Only if he cooks like this. Hello, I bet you he would. <laughs>